Okay, difference between teacher and counselor, we won't go for that again. Bad counseling skill and concepts, okay? So we need to understand what is good counseling and what is bad counseling. Bad counseling, when we make the counselee feel uncomfortable. Now, when we counsel people, we don't make people uncomfortable. And when we teach people, we don't make people uncomfortable either. And when we preach, we don't make people uncomfortable. Some people, they just yell at people, criticize people in the preaching, in the teaching, in the counseling. It's all teaching, it's called criticism, and say, you did this wrong, did that wrong. And it's not going to help people it, and make people feel very uncomfortable. Now, many people have expressed to me, many couples, when I counsel them, because generally, for marriage problems, generally it's the, the women who come for, to, for help, because generally women ask for help more. <clears throat> and then they would complain about a husband. The husband doesn't listen to me, doesn't care about me, doesn't talk to me, doesn't treat me nicely. So uh, generally I will ask her, okay, um, how did you respond to your husband when your husband doesn't treat you well? And then she will realize that also she's responsible, that also maybe she got frustrated, she got emotional when the husband has some problem. So that's mutual problem. Now, it could be started by the husband, but then her, her behavior after that could affect the husband also. And then when I see the couple together, that I don't, I don't criticize them. I would explain to them about the difference between male and female. Actually, I would start, first start saying, okay, I thank you for coming, uh, for counseling, it's a good start. And, uh, and then I will ask them, do you believe that the marriage has a future? Do you think if you work on the marriage, the marriage will become better? And then I will ask them to say the good things about the other person, see if they can think of any good things. And then, I will explain about the, now I will uh, ask them about the problem in the marriage and then I will explain to them about the difference between male and female because male generally are interested in activities, in uh, action, in projects. Uh, they're not so interested in relationship, in caring and loving and listening to people. And then women generally want the husband to listen to them, to care about them, to have a caring relationship, a loving relationship. And then when a woman is unhappy, then he will have a, have a has problem unresolved, then he would have, she would have frustration inside, store up, and then she would, uh, it, she could blow up when the problems are not resolved. So I say to them, I know that both of you are uh, having a, a suffering in some way. You try to work on a marriage, the husband thinks that I, I tell the hus wife what to do, then it solves the problem. The husband usually thinks that I teach the wife, then the problem is resolved. Just tell the wife, you know, shut up and don't say anything, don't think about those things, and then the problem will be taken care of. They think that teaching the wife what to do, you submit to me, and then the problem will be resolved. They think that teaching will solve the problem. The teaching doesn't solve, uh, resolve the problem. Okay, so I, I tell the husband that maybe you're not used to expressing yourself and caring and listening. That is hard for you. And then I would say to the wife also, I, I know it's difficult for you because you find that the husband doesn't listen to you and you try to take care of him, but then he doesn't take care of you. And so I will express the difficulty of each person. And then if they are trying to do anything uh, good to their person, I will appreciate that. So both of them f found that they were accepted by me, that I don't criticize them. I, I, I say, I know that you are facing a difficulty. You try to find a solution. And so I say, okay, let's try to find a solution how to fix the problem, uh, how to resolve uh, the, the difficulties, and then <clears throat> that you can build up a good relationship again. So I, they both feel accepted. Now, and then, uh, a number of times the husband said to me, now usually the women always say thank you for counseling, but it's rare for the men to express. But the men will express to me and say, and said, you are the first person to understand my feelings. 
Because most people will just say, you don't listen to your wife, you don't, you're ni not nice to your wife, and uh, it's your fault. And the wife keep telling him, you, it's your fault, it's your fault. But I tell him that you have a difficulty, and your wife has a difficulty. You both are suffering. And let's find a, a solution. So we, we find a difficulty. Now in the relationship too, in the husband and wife relationship, I encourage you not to criticize the other person, but to say, we have a difficulty. How can we face it? How can we resolve the problem? Instead of saying, it's your fault, it's your fault, and criticize the other person. Criticism doesn't help. And so first thing we do as a counselor, don't make the other person feel uncomfortable. And, and then the bad behavior of a counselor, of a counselor is despise the counselor and his feeling and say you're useless, you don't do anything well, you, you have to repent, you know, just tell them that you're doing bad. It's not going to change things. Now, in order to help people to repent, we need to guide them to see the faults. First, we tell them it's the difficulty they're facing and then we can overcome it. How can we overcome it? And then if people are not willing to change, then we can ask them, okay, if you are not willing to change what will happen in a marriage, to so ask them, to let them know the difficulty and the problem, instead of saying, when you treat your wife like that, you have difficulty. So we, I don't criticize, I let them know the problem in a peaceful way. And then, number three that we don't do is not to compare ourselves with the counselee. You know, if a counselor said, if I were in your situation, I would not take it seriously, I would not take it personally, I would not be hurt. Now, as a counselor, we might not be hurt, but the counselee doesn't have that ability to take care of the problem. So we don't compare ourselves. Five, uh, I'm sorry, four, being emotionally affected by the counselee, and then the counselor got frustrated. And then the facial expression became very tense, so that's not good because then it shows that the counselor get very emotional. We don't carry the burdens of them. We counsel them peacefully, we care about them, but we don't carry the burdens. Number five, counselor only cares and does not guide the counselee. Uh, just caring them about them and empathize with them, but don't guide them. That's a problem too. Number six, counselor only teaches and does not respond to the feelings of the counselee. Does teaches what to do and does not respond to the feelings and doesn't care about them, doesn't empathize with them, then it's just teaching, that's not counseling. Number seven, counselor crosses the counselor boundary. That one way is that he carries the burden of the family he, or, uh, or a person or has emotional problem, he carries the burden so much that he, become, that he becomes emotional himself. He, he, he becomes like a father to the person. That's, that's not what we do. Now we can care for people, have a fatherly love, but we, don't, we cannot carry the burden of each person like really as his parent. We cannot be the parent, the parents of every member of the church. We cannot carry all the burdens. And then the counselor says, I'm very unhappy now because my counselee is unhappy, so I, I care about him and now I'm very unhappy. Then Emo sooner or later he become, he will ha be emotionally sick. He will have emotional problem. And then another way to cross the, uh, the boundary is that the counselor begin to have uh, attachment to the, to the counselee. That he, he, he wants that counselee to come to seek his help because he find security in that. He, he feel supported because the counselor, counselor needs him, he feel needed. His wife doesn't need him. The counselor needs him, so he feel very happy in the relationship. That's beginning to cross. That he really wants that counselor to depend on him. And then, and become worse, if there become a, uh, a sentimental relationship, uh, then it become a problem, or having sex with a counselor, that's, that's serious sin. Okay, counselor, counseling principles. First, the counselor has to counsel himself for his whole lifetime. We have to counsel ourselves. Am I handling my problems now? Am I handling my emotions? And I am I handling my relationship? Second, respect the counselee and accept and treasure him unconditionally. 
like God accepts us before He changes us. So we accept them as precious beings. They are precious people. Three, help the counselee to know and explore his potential and resources. That each person has potential. That God has a wonderful plan in his life. And uh, so explore his potential and his resources. His family is his resource. Instead of thinking of the family as enemies or people who criticize him, his family does support him. So that's his resource too. Whatever resources he has, he has his job now can provide for him. That's his resource that he needs to treasure his job. And then for care for the thinking, feeling, and behavior and spiritual life of the counselee. So care for his, his everything, his thinking, his feelings, behavior, and spiritual life and help him in every way. Now, we need to understand each person has six groups of feelings. Glad, sad, mad, afraid, ashamed, hurts. Okay? So glad include happiness, excitement, uh, enjoying something. Sad means unhappy, depressed. Mad is anger, frustrated, frustration. Afraid is fear. Uh, and then ashamed is being ashamed and guilty and hurt feeling. So um, everyone, every person has feelings. We need to accept our feelings. We do have feelings. If someone rejects us, we have feelings. If a pastor preaches a sermon and he forgot part of the sermon, he preaches the sermon uh, in a way that is not helpful, he will feel bad. That's natural. That feeling is telling him something is wrong, something needs to be done. How can he work on his next sermon so that he can do better? If he's hurt by someone, it tells him that he's being hurt now. How can he handle that hurt feelings? So every feeling is telling him something. It's giving him a message. When he's happy, it's telling him something is good. So he can appreciate those things and keep those things uh, in his life. And then sad, something, uh, you know, uh, unfortunate things happen. Uh, some problems happen, so that tell him that something needs to be done. He's angry. Maybe you know there's some problem with a person or with a situation that he needs to do something. He's afraid. That means he cannot face some problem. That it's telling him he needs to face the problem. He needs to handle his fear. He's ashamed. Maybe he has guilt feeling, or he's ashamed of himself that thinking that he is uh, worthless, he is useless then he need to take care of that shame feeling, that guilt feeling, so that he can be happy about himself. In his hurt feelings, that means he need to uh, heal, bring healing by praying to God and taking care of the hurtful feelings and thinking so that he can be healed. So we all need to be aware of our feelings. Now for many men, generally, they don't talk about the feelings that much. Uh, because man has a tendency just to pay attention to activities and actions so they don't pay attention to feelings and then sometimes they suppress the feelings they 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 are not aware of the feelings and then the feeling are affecting them and they didn't know that so that's something we need to learn to pay attention so i hope you remember these feelings glad sad mad afraid ashamed and then hurts so that we handle it okay now you can watch this video again on facebook and YouTube, you know, I have many uh, teaching on counseling and feelings. You can search uh, counseling or feeling pastor Yip, Y-I-P, and then you can find it. Okay, now, simple steps of counseling. Now, counseling generally is a master degree, but I'm teaching it in a simple way and it's practical way. If you learn it, you can still do it. Of course, you can learn more if you go to school, but now I'm teaching it in one session. First, we build up a trusting relationship and lis listening and guiding the person to express by using questions. So that's the first thing to build up a trusting relationship that the person feels that they can trust us. You know, When we do counseling, we let them know it's fine, it's okay, 
even with the problems there are ways to handle it don't worry about it there's there are solutions there are ways to solve the problem there are ways to build up the relationship again so we assure them and we smile at them we we give them assurance that we'll work on it uh, things can be changed things can be fixed so that let them feel they can trust us and trust the counseling and accept and empathize with the counsel counselee so accept them now uh, first also guide them to express the, uh, themselves by asking questions ask questions how is it now what happened and what do you think about that what do you feel about that and what what did you do after that so ask questions and then accept and empathize with the counselee accept their feeling accept their problems and empathize with them empathize means I I feel your feeling I feel your feeling I feel what you're feeling now I, I feel sad because you you're sad you're facing this problem I feel sad for you I know that you're facing some difficulty so empathize could mean mentally empathizing understanding and then emotionally feel the feeling now the, of course the feeling doesn't mean oh now we're crying you know but it's okay to weep with those who weep but we don't weep with everyone who weeps who weeps that but we feel the feelings we feel sad that this person is suffering so much and then guide him to analyze the situation guide him to analyze how the situation is and help him to manage his thinking and emotions so how to manage his thinking and emotions that maybe he's thinking he's thinking people are mistreating him people hate him so he he hates the other people and then he doesn't know how to handle the problem and then he's very emotional and then five imagine the best scenario if they can change so we can ask them okay well, imagine one day you can become very joyful very happy how would that be that you can manage all your problems how would that be or well, imagine that you and your wife that they are happily living together that you can laugh together you can have fun together how would that be imagine that you restore go back to the situation when you first met each other and you were in love can you imagine that you go back to that situation how would that be now that motivates them to think to imagine how it would be if the situation it, uh, is fixed and it, they go back to the best scenario and then how would that be and then uh, let them think about that and then guide them to have the motivation to change so do you want to change and guide them to think of ways to work on the problem how to work on the problem okay now now uh, I'm going to express in a very simple way for counseling okay so it's easier for you to remember instead of remembering all the steps now if you can remember all these steps is very good but now I'm going to just say okay if a person or a couple come to you for counseling so what we do we first make them feel comfortable and listen to them and empathize with them and then we ask them do you want to uh, the, the situation to be improved do you want to fix the problem can you imagine how it will be when the f problem is fixed and do you uh, have you done anything to fix the problem uh, do you uh, do you want to fix the problem and have you done anything to fix the problem and does it work does it work now if it doesn't work uh, what do you why do you think it doesn't work and uh, has anything worked have you done anything that makes a relationship better have you have you done anything that makes your feeling better now those things if it makes you feel better then you can keep doing it but you can think of more ways to improve it okay so can you think of more ways to to fix a situation to to uh, help you handle the problem now if you cannot think of some ways can I suggest you some ways and can you do it can you uh, put this into practice uh, so this is a simple way of looking at counseling let me say that again so you can remember okay first we make the person feel comfortable we, we tell them okay uh, things will be okay and there are ways to fix it and uh, and then listen to them and empathize with them I know it's difficult for you to go through this situation I know it's difficult and it, and it makes you unhappy 
and uh, uh, you are suffering because of this. And uh, do you want to fix the problem? Do you want that to improve? And the person says yes. And then uh, can you imagine a situation when this problem is fixed and then uh, your relationship becomes better and then you can, your marriage becomes like when you were first fell in love and then or you yourself become very happy and joyful in the Lord. Do you want to go back to that situation? And then uh, if the person says, I want to, then you can ask him, have you done anything to fix the situation? If he says yes, then uh, tell me about it and then does it work? If he says, well, it helps a little bit, then that's good, that's good. That's one thing you can continue to do if it's the right way, okay? Uh, if it's not the right way, then you don't do it. For instance, the person says, I beat him up and then I feel very good. <laughs> that's not a good way. Uh, or I gossip about him everywhere, that's not a good way. You know, but if he handles his emotions and uh, he finds someone to pray with him and it helps, then it's good. So you can find people to pray with you in the future. Okay, now, uh, so, so this uh, ways that is helpful, can you continue to do it? And then do you want to think of some other ways that might be helpful? And if he says, uh, yeah, I can think of some way and then we can explore that if that is possible. If he cannot think of some way and then we can say, well, uh, how about I suggest some ways to you? And then do you think you can do it? Do you think uh, you can put it in practice? And then if he's willing, then, uh, then uh, you go home and try to do it and give him some assignments. Next time, tell me how it is, okay? So this is the basic steps of counseling. Basically to guide him to realize the problem, to that he want to fix the problem, and then what are pos some possible ways, what, what have worked, what have not worked, and what are some ways to fix the problem from now on, and then can I suggest some ways. So generally using questions to guide a person instead of telling him what to do. Because when we ask questions and then the person think for himself, then he would be, after he thinks for himself, then it will stick in his mind more. He will remember it more. So it's a good way to ask people to think before telling them what to do. Uh, that when people think about it and then he finds a solution, then he owns it, owns it because it belongs to him. It's, it comes from his thinking that he thinks, he thought of his way of solving the problem and now he found the way, then it belongs to him. So to ask him uh, questions and let him think is better than just telling him what to do. Sometimes, like for instance, your children don't listen to you and then you say, well, uh, do you think you are precious, you are important in the sight of God? And then he says, yes. You know, so uh, what do you think are your strengths? Uh, do you think you can become an uh, important person? What are some things you do well? Uh, then he tells you, wow, that's good, you do something well. And can you do that thing better? And so that way he will realize, oh, I, I found that I can do something good. For instance, some children say I can draw well. Then it's a good thing. Now, he might not be a, become an artist, but at least he know how to draw things. It's helpful in many ways, you know. Uh, he can talk with people. That's a good thing. You can relate to people. That's important because you can make friends with people. So that's something uh, good he can do. And sometimes we can ask questions and say, uh, do you have good friends? He says, yes. Then we say, wow, you have the skill to relate to your friends. That's a good skill. That's a good thing you have friends. So that way we can help the children to become uh, more confident on, on himself that he's important. So we, we guide our children to understand himself more, that he knows that he's important, that he's precious. Then he has more motivation. Now, if you want to be an important person, do you want to study so that you can you know, do well in school and then in the future you can do things better? So that way we can guide him to think and have motivation to, uh, to improve. So that's something we can do in counseling, uh, even uh, you know, sometimes counseling is not just a formal setting. It can be talking with your children, talking with your spouse, talking with your members, or even when you greet your member, and then he says, oh, I'm unhappy today. And then you say, well, um, 
God is happy that you come to Him now. And then when you cry out to God, God is very happy. Can we cry out to God right now? And then He said, okay, let's cry out to God. God, please help me. Oh, and then we can say, well, God is very happy with you now. So even in the time when we greet someone, we can counsel Him by saying, wow, you know, God, can, do you think God will be happy when He sees you coming to church? Do you think God will be happy with you when you praise Him? So that way we're counseling Him to, to uh, change. Okay, the steps of counseling. First, build up a trusting relationship. Now, because of the time, I will just um, I'll go over each of this point briefly. So build up a trusting relationship that He feel comfortable with us. We say, we speak gently and we accept the feeling and then uh, we imagine we have the same problem we, so we have empathy for this person and then listening now listening is very very difficult because when we listen very often we we want to do something we have an agenda for the person already so when we listen to the person we already trying to think of actually what we want to do we want him to forgive his wife we want him to be nice to his wife we want him to forgive and uh, and love his wife and build up his family we want him to do that so in the process of the listening we keep thinking about how can I make him love his wife more so that's uh, then we don't listen we don't hear what he said uh, but he might have said um, uh, you know I, uh, I I feel hurt when when I try to help my wife and she doesn't listen to me, I, when I treat him nicely, he doesn't, she doesn't respond. Then we want to find out, how did you treat her nicely? Maybe she, he thinks that he's treating her nicely by telling her, work hard. Now some people think working hard is encouraging someone. Well, I, I told her to work hard. Well, do you think that is being nice to your wife? That's just telling her to do something. That is that nice, you know. If if I tell you go home and preach, I mean, I mean, sorry, to pray more, to read the Bible more, uh, that's just telling you to do something. Does it necessarily mean that you get encouraged? It's just telling you to do something. If your wife keeps telling you, go wash the dishes, go clean the house, go earn more money, does it make you feel good? So, so we listen, and find out what the person is ex experiencing. Why is he feeling unhappy? What hurt him? Uh, why does he feel hurt? Because sometimes he might have some expectation. He, we want to find out about the person that maybe the person has some problematic way of thinking and he didn't know that. So when we listen, we find that, uh, we find that oh, he thinks that uh, when, uh, uh, you know, when people treat him a certain way, that means people hate him. So therefore, he he feel, you know, he's very unhappy and he gets very angry. So he has this thinking, or he thinks that when people don't listen to him, then he, it's right for him to be angry. So he got angry. So he, he, he has certain way of thinking. So we listen carefully. So uh, that's very important. And one good, one good time we can practice listening is to listen to your wife or husband, or children, or church members. It's a good time to practice that. After you listen to the person and tell him what you heard, and see if it is correct. You might be surprised that many times you say what, what she said, and then she said, no, I did not say that. It's just what you think, I did not say that. And, uh, or, and then she said, well, it's right, but you missed some of my points. So we need to practice. Now, listening will make us better Christians. Why? Because when we can listen to people, we can do evangelism better. We can do caring better. We can have better marriage. We can have better ministry when we listen to people. When we understand people, it will build up our whole life. So I hope that we all understand the importance of listening. It will build up our whole life. My wife helps me a lot. Uh, sometimes she tells me, uh, you know, something. Sometimes I talk to some someone, and she was there. Now she would not tell me in front of the person. She did not want to embarrass me. And then when we go home, and then she would tell me, you know, today, 
uh, he said something uh, do you think you have hurt him and then oh I said oh I forgot I forgot to respond to him I, I did not pay attention to that or sometimes I just did not hear it because I was thinking inside inside of me I was thinking how to help him so I forgot I didn't pay attention so when she told me I keep paying attention to people when they talk and then I improve so I hope you learn to listen when you talk to your wife uh, and listen to that to her and respond to her and your children and see if you understand them then you you are improving as a person as a Christian as a pastor uh, as a uh, worker okay and why many people are problem listening 